Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called The Volume of a Cone, and this is part one. So here in the beginning, we will show you the formula to calculate the volume of a cone. Think about an upside down ice cream cone, right? And we'll try to give some motivation as to where it comes from, and then we will apply it and calculate and use it in actually finding volume of problems. So what we're talking about here is uh, just like you would uh, imagine. Here we have, you know, a cone like this, right? In fact, you can see a better picture of it from problem number one. This is basically what we're going for right here. All right, you can see it has a circular base down here, and it has some vertical height, and then we usually know the radius or the diameter of the base right here, right? So you can, you can think of this thing being a, a circular base like this. It has some height like this, and then it has some radius from the center to the edge right here, and this radius is what we call R. Now, Without any proof, I'm going to tell you that the volume of this cone is equal to one-third times pi times r times squared times the height. Now it looks complicated, but let's break it down and think about it and compare this equation to what we already know the volume of a cylinder is. And what I mean is that this formula for the volume of this cone is actually very similar to what we already know the volume of a cylinder is. So let's compare these two things together. So let's say we have a cylinder, which is, uh, you know, has a circular top and a circular bottom like this. And we know that the cylinder has some height, right? Just like the cone has some height. And we know that the base or the either side of the base of the cylinder has some radius from the center to the edge. So you see there's some parallels here because you have a, the radius of a base, your radius of a base, you have a height. The only real difference is that the cylinder it just continues and has a straight line edges and the cone tapers to a point. But basically, other than that, they're the same shape, right? Now, we've already learned in the last lesson that the volume of the cylinder is just pi times r times squared times h. Now, why did we, uh, we talked about this in the last lesson. Why is this the case? Because you can think of volume of something as taking the surface area of the bottom of the thing, in this case, pi r squared, that's the area of the circular bottom there. And if we take the area and multiply it times the height, it's like, it's like slicing the cylinder into an infinite little series of slices, each with an area, cross-sectional area, and adding them all together creates the volume of the object, right? Now this kind of gets and touches into a little bit of calculus because we do this all the time in calculus to find volumes of crazy shapes. But we're not kind of there yet, but I'm just letting you know this dovetails into calculus, so it's not that hard to understand. By taking the area of the base and multiplying by the height, it's like extruding this surface area and pulling it down, revealing the volume. And so by multiplying by the height, we're like adding up all of these little slices of the surface area throughout and adding them all together by multiplying by H gives us the volume. So we're turning like a cross-sectional area into a volume by multiplying by the height. Now look at these two equations. They're the same. The only difference, we have pi r squared H. The only difference is this factor of one third. So the way to view the volume of a cone like this is just to consider it as, as the volume of the cylinder that would have bound this, right? Because that you can Im imagine it sitting inside of a cylinder, right? It's the volume of the cylinder that would fit around this cone, but then we, obviously that cylinder volume is too large, we chop it down to a third of its original size, and that is always going to be the volume of the interior cone. So you need to think about it as, okay, it's a volume of a cylinder, but we chop it down by a third, that's the volume of the cone that fits inside of that cylinder. Now, why is it one third? Why is, why is it not one fourth, or one fifth, or one sixth, or one tenth? Why, okay? Well, it's the geometry of the space we live in. And I will tell you that when you get to calculus, you will learn to calculate and to, to, to derive why it's one third. Right now, I'm just telling you it's one third. I'm saying, uh, it's, it's take the volume of the cylinder, cut it down by, to a third of its original size, that's the volume of the cone that fits inside of there. And I'm just telling you to accept it. But when you get in the calculus, you actually prove that this is true. But we just don't have the tools yet, and that's what a lot of calculus later on down the road allows us to do, is to prove things like this. So for now, just think of it conceptually, one third pi r squared h, it's the volume of a cylinder chopped down to a third of its original size, that's the cone that fits inside, and this fraction of one third that we multiply, that's something that comes out of calculus later that we will learn how to figure out in a future class. All right, so let's go ahead and apply what we have learned. We know that we have this cylinder, or this uh, cone, we wanna find the volume of this cone. So now that we've talked about it, we know that the volume of this guy is one third times pi times r squared times h. And now we just fill in the blanks. We have one third 
multiplied by pi. Now, uh, pi is an infinite uh, decimal, you know, 3.141592, and it goes on and on forever, but we're going to truncate it to 3.14. That's an approximation. That's not exact, but it's good enough for this calculation. Times the radius squared, which is 2, so we have 2 squared, the radius of the base of that cone, and then the height, which is measured from the base of the thing at a 90 degree angle straight up to the tippy top, 4 centimeters. All right, so what we have here, one-third uh, times 3.14. All right, then we have 2 squared, 2 times 2, that's 4. And then we have a course of 4 at the end here. Now, you could just dump it all into a calculator, or what you can say is you have one-third, and then 3.14 times 4 works out to be 12.56 and then you have to multiply by this four. So when you take 12.56 and multiply by four, and then you either multiply by a third or you take this product and then you just divide by three, it gives you the same answer either way. The volume that you're gonna get for this thing is 16.746 with a repeating bar over the six. So the six is going on forever. Now, what are the units here? Well, the units were in centimeters. So since we're trying to find uh, volume, you know, area is square centimeters, volume is cubic centimeters. So it's going to be centimeters cubed. So 17.746 with a repeating bar, centimeters cubed, right? So one third pi r squared h, 17.746 repeating centimeters cubed, or cubic centimeters. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. We're just getting practice here. I mean, these, these are not special. These are not like harder or anything. We're just getting practice. But the units are different. The units are in millimeters here. So the volume of a cone is one-third pi r squared h. It's the surface area of the bottom times the height. That's a cylinder. You cut it down to a third of its original size, and that's what we have. So we have one-third times 3.14 times the radius, which is 3. So we have 3 squared. Then the height is 6. So we have a 6 right here. All right? And so what do we have here? We have uh, one-third times 3.14. Then we have 3 times 3 is 9, and then we have times 6. Now, if you're using a calculator, I mean, you just dump it in there. Just multiply it out, multiply it by a third, and you're done. But if you're doing this by hand at all, you, you might notice that there is a 3 on the bottom, and then this stuff, if you think of it all being on the top of a fraction, it's in the top. So you have a 9 on the top and a 3 on the bottom. So you can kind of pre-simplify. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 9 divided by 3 is 3, and that simplifies the numbers quite a bit here. So the volume, uh, this fraction is now gone, by the way. So 3.14 times the 3 is going to give you 9.42. And then you're still going to have to multiply by that 6 there. So the volume that you're going to get is going to be 56.52. And what are the units? We had millimeters here, so this is cubic millimeters. So it is 56.52, and it's cubic millimeters here. So again, you could just multiply it out or pre, kind of pre-simplify, pre-cross-cancel, I guess you'd say. And then we multiply the 3 times the 3.14 to give us this. Then we have times the 6, and then we can see it's 56.52 cubic millimeters. All right. Move along to problem number three. Now, again, the units are a little different here. We have meters, same story, though. It's really just getting more practice. So the volume uh, is going to be one-third pi r squared times the height of this cone, right? So what do we have? One-third pi, we're writing as 3.14. Then we have the radius squared. The radius is four, so it's going to be four squared. And then the height here is eight meters, so eight. So let's keep going here. One-third then we have 3.14, then the 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16, and then multiply by the 8. All right, so if you take uh, 8 times 16 times 3.14, you get that, and then you multiply by a third, or you just divide by 3, you will get 133.973 repeating bar on the 3, and since everything was in meters, this is going to be in cubic meters. So we have 133.973 repeating bar cubic meters, like this. 133.973 repeating cubic meters. All right, we have one more, and the last problem is a little different than these, so stick around. We have to take one of these down, and we'll solve our last problem. All right, here is our very last problem. We have a cone just like we usually do, but this is a little different. I'm giving you the volume ahead of time. This is what the volume is, but I'm asking you to tell me the height of this thing. 
So we're kind of going backwards, and I want you to tell me the height of this cone. So you use the same equation. The volume of any cone is one-third times pi r squared h, right? And we just put in what we know. The volume is 376.8, and it's in cubic millimeters, so 376 decimal 8. And on the other side of the equal sign, we have the one-third. That needs to stay in place. Then we have the pi, 3.14. All right. And then the radius is 6, so we have 6 squared right here. And the height, we're labeling it as x here, but I'm just going to leave it in my equation as h because we know we're solving for the height here. All right. So what do we do? Well, it's a very simple matter. Basically, what we have to do, we have to multiply all this stuff out, and then we need to divide it away to get rid of this. So let's do one thing at a time. Let's rewrite 376.8. We have 1 third, 3.14. The 6 times 6 works out to 36. And then we have the height right here. All right, now, in order to proceed, we can just multiply it out. But you notice that we have a 36 here and a 3 on the bottom. So we can pre-simplify. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 36 divided by 3 is 12. So we have really a 12 times the pi here. So we have 376.8. And then we have uh, 3.14 times pi, which works out to 37.68. All right, we still have h here, multiplied by h. Now, how do we solve for h? Well, we have h multiplied by this, so we need to divide by this number, 37.68. So we'll divide here, 37.68. And what do we get? On the left-hand side, 376.8, or yeah, 376.8 divided by 37.68 works out to be 10. On the right-hand side, this cancels with this, of course, and we have only the height left. So the height is 10. What units are we working with? Everything is in millimeters, so it's millimeters, 10 millimeters. This is the final answer. So the height, 10 millimeters. So whether you are given the uh, radius and the height of a cone and trying to find the volume, or if you're given the volume and trying to go backwards to find the height or even the radius, we'll do that later uh, in a future problem, um, the equation is the same. You put in what you know, and you use the rules of algebra to solve it. You know, we don't have a separate lesson on how to solve the volume of a cone specifically because it's just an algebra equation. Once you know how to manipulate equations, which we've already learned before, then applying it to this particular equation is just, uh, it's like reading a book. You don't memorize all the books you know. You know how to read words and sentences, and then you can read anything. So in math, we need to learn how to solve equations, and then you can apply it to lots of equations and situations. You don't memorize like all the situations. You take a skill and you apply it. That's what we're doing here. So I'd like you to solve these. Make sure you understand how to calculate the answers. Follow me on the part two. We'll continue building your skills.